there are several factors that affect the rate of a chemical reaction, and we're going to look at three of them. The first one is particle size. As you can see here, the steel nail is not reacting, even in the hottest part of the Bunsen burner flame. If you try some steel wool, however, you can see that it is actually beginning to burn. The larger surface area allows more oxygen to contact the hot iron. Iron filings behave in a similar way, producing bright sparks of light. And in fact, you find iron filings as an important component of the sparklers on bonfire night. If you can manage to get an iron powder with small enough particles, it is actually pyrophoric. That is, it will burn spontaneously in air. You can see that in these two demonstrations here, as pyrophoric iron is sprinkled through the air, and you can see the orange glow as it catches fire. Here's another example of the effect of particle size. The two test tubes both contain one molar hydrochloric acid. The one on the left has some marble chips added, and the one on the right has some powdered calcium carbonate, chemically exactly the same. As you can see, the powdered carbonate reacts much more rapidly. Another factor affecting rates of reaction is temperature. This reaction is that of potassium 7 manganate, potassium permanganate, with ethane dioic acid, oxalic acid. The reaction can be followed simply by seeing how long it takes for the purple manganate ion colour to disappear. This first example is at room temperature, 21 degrees Celsius in this particular case, and as you can see, it is not particularly rapid. At first, in fact, it is really rather slow. Interestingly, though, the reaction is catalyzed by manganese 2 plus ions, one of the products of the reaction. So as the reaction proceeds, it does so at a faster and faster rate. You can now see that it is starting to fade. And after 2 minutes and 30 seconds in this case, the solution is completely colourless. This time, the solution is at 60 degrees Celsius, and as you can see, the reaction takes place much faster. In fact, it's colourless in under 20 seconds. The final factor we're looking at is concentration. This reaction is the classic sodium thiosulfate acid reaction. When the two solutions are mixed, the reaction produces colloidal particles of sulphur, which make the mixture go cloudy. You can follow the reaction by seeing how long it takes for a cross drawn underneath the tube to become obscured. The solution on the left has a higher concentration of thiosulfate and, as you will see, it goes cloudier more rapidly.
Another reaction that could be used to investigate reaction rates is the iodine clock. This is the reaction between potassium iodide and hydrogen peroxide. The solution also contains sodium thiosulfate and starch solution. The peroxide converts iodide to iodine, but this is immediately reduced back to iodide by the thiosulfate. However, once all the thiosulfate is used up, the iodine persists and it forms a dark blue-black complex with the starch. This particular set of tubes is in decreasing order of concentration, from left to right. 